Okay, welcome to this uh, second module uh, of intelligent control uh, course module. Uh, in today's class, the topic is fuzzy sets a primer. That is a very uh, introductory version of fuzzy sets that are minimally necessary to understand fuzzy control system. Topics to be covered, brief review of conventional sets, introduction to fuzzy sets, membership functions, operation on fuzzy sets. Brief review of conventional sets, these are uh, fundamental uh, concepts that already you are aware of, I will just revisit them. Uh, first set, collection of objects having one or more common characteristic collection of objects having one or more common characteristics. For example, set of natural numbers, set of real numbers, members or elements, objects belonging to a set is represented as x belonging to A, where A is a set. Subset B, subset, here su su subset B, uh, B, set B is a subset of A, B is said to be a subset of set A if and only if Y belongs to B implies Y belongs to A for all Y. Proper subset, a set B is said to be a proper subset of A if and only if B is a subset of A and for all X, there exist X belonging to A such that X does not belong to B. For example, in this case B is a proper subset of A equal sets, two sets A and B are said to be equal if for all X belonging to A and for all Y belonging to B, X equal to Y. For example, set B and set A, they are equal sets. Intersection operation, for any two sets A and B, if there exist X common in both A and B, then X belonging to A intersection B, where intersection denotes the logical intersection operation. For example, 7 and 8, these two elements belong to intersection of set A and set B. Similarly, union operation, for any two sets A and B, if there exist X, which is a member of either A or B, then X belong to A union B, where union denotes the union operation. Universal set, a universal set U is a set that has all possible members of a particular domain. I will give you an idea. Before I talk here, in the slides you will see, we are talking about concept of a fuzzy number. So, before I talk about this, why fuzzy is uh, used? You know, why we will be learning about fuzzy? You know, the fuzzy means uh, that uh, in general sense when we talk about the real world, uh, our expression of the real world, the way we quantify the real world, the way we uh, describe the real world, uh, so they are not very precise. When I say what is your height? Uh, so, nobody would say, nobody would expect, you know, uh, uh, if, I, uh, if I ask you a precise question probably you will give me, uh, okay, your height is 5.8 inch, 5 feet 8 inch, but uh, normally when I see people, I would say, oh, this person is tall, according to my own estimate, my own belief, my own experience. Okay? Or if I say, what is the temperature today? Uh, the normal answer people would say, today is very hot or it is hot or it is cool. So, our expression about the world around us is always not precise. So, not to be precise is exactly what is fuzzy. So, when I say, what is fuzzy? fuzzy logic, <laughs> a logic that which is not very precise. Okay? That is the best way I would say, the normally I would, I always say what is fuzzy, fuzzy means that which is not very precise. Uh, but since we deal with our world with this imprecise way, 
So, naturally the computation that involves the logic of impreciseness is much more powerful than the computation that is being carried through a precise manner or a, 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 a rather I would say precision logic based computation is inferior not always, but in many applications they are very inferior means the, 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 the in terms of technological application in our day to day uh, um, benefit means the normal way. Uh, so, that so the the, the fuzzy logic become very very uh, uh, popular when uh, in particular the Japanese they sold the fuzzy logic controller fuzzy logic chips in all kinds of household appliances in early 90s whether it is washing machine or uh, you know the automated uh, uh, ticket uh, machine. Uh, so, anything that you have you know uh, the usual household appliances uh, the Japanese they actually made use of the fuzzy logic uh, and hence uh, its popularity grew. But we would be seeing in this class actually how in fact the imprecise way of looking at things and manipulating them is much more powerful than precise way of looking at them and then manipulating them. Okay. Okay. So, that is I think that is a, that's a background I, I did not uh, 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 speak much uh, here because we discussed something about fuzzy concepts in our earlier introductory lecture. So, now we will go ahead the concept of uh, a fuzzy number. So, as I said you fuzzy means from imprecision uh, sorry precision to imprecision. So, like here uh, you see her when I say 0 you can easily see her you know I have an arrow at 0 pointing that I am exactly meaning 0 means 0 0.0000. .00000. Very precise, okay. But when I say al almost zero, when I say almost zero, so I don't mean only zero. Rather, uh, in the periphery of zero, I can tolerate a band from minus one to one, okay. But as I go towards one or minus one, uh, I am, I, uh, I am, I am going away from 0 the notion of 0. Okay. So, that is what is almost 0 that is uh, around 0 okay. around 0, but in a small bandwidth I still allow certain bandwidth for 0. And uh, uh, I will not be talking about membership now, but a notion is that uh, I allow some bandwidth small bandwidth when I say almost 0 and when I say near 0 my bandwidth still further increases okay. here in this case minus 2 to 2. Okay. So, I would say that when I encounter any data between minus 2 to 2 they still I will con I would consider them to be near 0, but uh, uh, as I, I go away from 0 uh, towards minus 2 uh, the, the level or the, the confidence level uh, how near their 0 reduces. Like if it is very near to 0 of course, I am very certain and as I progressively go away from 0 the level of confidence also goes down, okay. but still there is a a, a, a tolerance limit that. So, what I am saying is that here I am precise I become imprecise where here I further I become more imprecise in the in the third case. Okay. So, this is this this concept uh, of to be imprecise is fuzzy okay. or to deal with 
the day to day data that we collect or we encounter and representing them in an imprecise manner like here almost 0, near 0 or hot, cold uh, or tall is if I am referring to height, tall, short, medium. Hmm. So, so, this kind of uh, uh, terminology that we normally uh, talk or exchange among ourselves in our communication, uh, they actually deal with imprecise data rather than precise data. So, naturally since our communications are imprecise, the, the computation resulting out of such communication, communication language, the language which is so imprecise uh, must have or must be associated with uh, some logic. And uh, the fuzzy logic as you know, uh, the father of fuzzy logic is uh, Lofty Jade, who is still there. So, the, the, the notion of fuzzy should be now very clear to you that we are now looking forward to a, uh, to a uh, tool uh, that can manipulate uh, those kind of data which are imprecise. So, that is why we must have a mathematical tool and that is exactly fuzzy logic. As I said that uh, this, uh, this was uh, the father of this fuzzy logic is uh, Lofty A. Jade from UC Berkeley um, in way back in 1965, uh, he uh, uh, pioneered the research in fuzzy logic. So, now we will talking about fuzzy sets, right. So, we had a classical set when I talked about classical set you know we had classical set of the numbers that you know like we, we talked about the set of natural number, set of real number like that. So, now how, how the difference between a fuzzy set and, uh, and, uh, and a classical set or a crisp set. So, the, the difference is that uh, the members they belong to a set A or a specific set A or B or X or Y whatever it is um, we define them, but uh, the degree of belonging to this set uh, is is imprecise. Okay. So, like if I say uh, a universal set in natural numbers, so all the natural numbers they all fall in, the, in this uh, uh, set. Now, if I take a subset of this natural number okay, like in earlier case we put 1 to 11 in one set. So, when I say whether 12 belongs to set A the answer is no. 13 belongs to set A, the answer is no, because in my natural number set only 1 to 11 they are placed. This is called classical set and their belongingness here is 1, they all belong to this set. Uh, but in fuzzy set, you know, I can have all the numbers in this set, but with a membership grade associated with it. When I say membership grade is 0, that means they do not belong to this set. Whereas, a membership grade between 0 to 1, it says how much this particular object may belong to this set. Okay. Like I, I give you an example, uh, like uh, all, all tall people, a set of all tall people. Uh, so, that now, uh, at all if I define uh, uh, classically I would say above 6 is tall, below 6 is not tall that is 5.9 5 feet 9 inch is not tall and uh, 6.1 6 feet uh, 1 inch is tall. 
So, that looks very uh, you know weird or really uh, very uh, it does not look nice to say that a person who is 6 feet 1 inch tall and 5 feet 9 inch is not tall. So, this ambiguity uh, that we have uh, in terms of you know de defining such a thing in classical set the, the difficulty that we face can be easily resolved in fuzzy set. Okay? Because in fuzzy set uh, we can easily say both 6.1 as well as 6 feet 1 inch as well as 5.9 inch tall, but level is difference they are tall, but with a membership grade associated with this. So, this is what is fuzzy set every member x of a fuzzy set A is assigned a fuzzy index uh, this is the membership grade mu A x in the interval of 0 to 1 which is often called as the grade of membership of x in A. In classical set this membership grade is either 0 or 1 it either belongs to set A or does not belong. Okay. But in fuzzy set uh, uh, the, this answer is not precise answer is is possible like I say it is belonging to set A with a fuzzy membership 0 0.9, 0 0.9 and when I say it belongs to A with a fuzzy membership 0 0.1 uh, that is when I say 0 0.9 more likely it belongs to set A when I say 0 0.1 less likely it belongs to set A. So, fuzzy sets a set of ordered pairs given by A uh, uh, the ordered pair is x. So, x is a member of the set along with that what is its membership grade how likely this object belongs to set A. Okay. Uh, so, that is level we put okay, where x is a universal set and mu a x is the grade of membership of the object x in A and as I s we, we said this membership mu a x it lies between 0 to 1. So, more towards 1 we say less likely uh, sorry more likely it is it belongs to A like if I say membership grade is 1 certainly it belongs to A. So, membership function a membership function mu a x is a characterized by uh, mu a that maps uh, all the members in set x to a number between 0 to 1, where x is a real number describing an object or its attribute. x is the universe of discourse and a is a subset of x. Now, we will uh, uh, compare the classical approach and a fuzzy approach. Now, let us say consider a universal set T which stands for temperature. So, temperature I can say cold, normal and hot. So, naturally these are subsets of the universal set T the cold temperature, normal temperature and hot temperature they are all subsets of T the classical approach probably one way to define the classical set is cold I define cold temperature T temperature is a member of cold set which belongs to the universal set T such that this temperature the, the member the member temperature is between 5 degree and 15 degree centigrade. Similarly, the member temperature belongs to normal if it is between 15 degree centigrade and 25 degree centigrade. Similarly, uh, the member temperature belongs to hot set when the temperature is between 25 degree centigrade and 35 degree centigrade. So, as I said earlier one should notice that 14.9 degree centigrade is cold according to this definition, while 15.1 degree centigrade is normal implying that the classical sets have rigid boundaries 
and because of this rigidity the the, the, the expression of the world or the expression of the data uh, is it becomes very difficult because for me I feel or any one of us will feel very uneasy to say that 14.9 degree centigrade is cold and 15.1 degree centigrade is normal or for that matter you know 24.9 degree centigrade is normal and 25 degree 25.1 degree centigrade is hot you know that's let, that's a little, little weird or let's you know you know bizarre to to have such a approach to categorize things into various sets but you see that in fuzzy set is very easy to represent them here how do i do it so this is my temperature axis this is my membership grade okay so how do i define that so i say the temperature if it is around 10 degree centigrade it is cold temperature is around 20 degree centigrade it is normal and when temperature is around 30 degree centigrade that is hot okay so in that sense uh, they they don't have a rigid boundary like you know if you say here 25 degree centigrade the 25 degree centigrade can be called simultaneously hot as well as normal with a fuzzy membership grade 0.5 okay so 25 degree centigrade belongs to both normal as well as hot but when i said 28 degree centigrade this is more likely uh, and a, a temperature in the category of hot whereas a 22 degree centigrade is a temperature that is more likely belonging to the set uh, normal. Okay. So, this is a much much nicer way to represent a set. Uh, so, this is how the, the imprecise data can be categorized in a much nice, nicer way using fuzzy logic uh, and this is the contrasting feature uh, why the fuzzy logic was introduced in the first place. Okay. So, uh, fuzzy sets have soft boundaries you usually see that I can I can say cold from almost 0 degree centigrade to 20 degree centigrade, okay. mm. but uh, if 10 degree is uh, has a membership grade 1 and as I move to away from 10 degree in both direction. Uh, so, I lose the membership grade, okay. the membership grade reduces from 1 to 0 here and in this direction also from 1 to 0 okay. and the temperature as I as I go, go, go my uh, membership grade reduces the I enter into a, a different set simultaneously and that is normal. So, you can easily see like temperature 12, 13, 14, 15 they, are, they all belong to both category cold as normal, but each member is associated with a membership grade this is very important. So, in classical set you are you saw only members in a set here there are members in a set associated with a fuzzy index or membership function. So, normally the nomenclature of a fuzzy set uh, how do we represent a fuzzy set then? Okay. So, the one way is that let the elements of x be x 1, x 2 and x up to x n then the fuzzy set A uh, is denoted by any of the following nomenclature, nomenclature there are other nomenclatures also I have only taken 3 and mostly uh, we will be using either this or the first one. So, where you see that ordered pair x 1 mu a x 1. So, x 1 is member of A and x 1 is associated with a fuzzy index and so forth x 2 and its fuzzy index x n and its uh, fuzzy membership. Uh, so, and uh, the same thing also I can write x 1 upon mu a x 1 that means, x 1 is the member and this is the membership. The other way is here in the third pattern I put the membership first and and the bottom I put the member 
So, x 1 with a membership, x 2 with membership, x n with membership. So, these are various nomenclature of the fuzzy set, we can select any one of them. Uh, so, once we talked about uh, that each member in a fuzzy set is associated with the membership function. So, we must know how to characterize this membership function, there are many methods. Okay. We will now discuss typical membership functions, the first is gamma function. Gamma function means you say that in gamma function what it happens is a linear function between alpha to beta and so this is this is my variable this is my variable u. So, I am defining a fuzzy index or fuzzy membership for a variable u and this is the membership A membership maximum value is always 1 and minimum value is of course, 0. So, between alpha and beta uh, the membership is linear and after beta the membership is constant which is equal to 1 then this is gamma uh, membership okay. gamma function. This is uh, uh, the, the gamma function was linear whereas, the s function is nonlinear in the sense from alpha to gamma here this is my u this is my u uh, u is my actual variable stands for u can be temperature u can be uh, height u can be age uh, u can be length whatever it is u and I am defining uh, a fuzzy index for that category. So, you see that from alpha to gamma uh, this is a function which is nonlinear. Okay. This is defined by this okay. and, and after gamma the membership is uh, 1 just like uh, gamma function. So, so the before uh, and before alpha the membership is 0. Okay. So, when u is less than alpha it is 0 and when it is alpha and beta then this is 2 u minus alpha by gamma minus alpha whole square and when it is gamma then 1 minus 2 u minus gamma gamma minus alpha whole square and when it is beyond gamma it is 1. Uh, this is one of the very widely used membership function which is called triangular membership function and mostly wised this which this particular uh, function is mostly wised uh, sorry uh, particularly in fuzzy logic control uh, the triangular membership function is pretty much used. Uh, so, in this triangular membership function you can easily see that before alpha when u is less than alpha membership is 0 between alpha and beta the membership function linearly increases and between beta and gamma this is linearly decreases. Okay. This is the triangular membership function. Uh, this is another function membership function which is pi function and pi function is actually a you can see is a kind of a trapezoidal function between alpha and beta it linearly increases between beta and alpha it remains constant at 1 and again from gamma to delta uh, it de linearly decreases. Uh, so, this is also some time such kind of uh, uh, membership functions are also used. So, this is another membership function Gaussian membership function you can uh, all of you know that in Gaussian function function uh, Gaussian function has two parameters that is mean m and sigma the variance. So, they using these two um, parameters we can either the nature of the function can be changed right and uh, this Gaussian uh, uh, membership function also is very widely used uh, in uh, in particular in fuzzy neural network and so forth. Uh, this is because this is pretty uh, uh, useful in terms of system identification using fuzzy neural network. So, okay, we talked about various uh, way uh, uh, how we can uh, define uh, or we can assign a membership function or membership index or membership grade to uh, to a member in a fuzzy set. Uh, now, next is uh, is operations on fuzzy sets 
uh, the main features of operation on fuzzy set is that unlike conventional sets, operations on fuzzy sets are usually described with reference to membership function. Okay. So, we will be uh, mostly when I say operation, I do not do with the member itself, because, uh, but what I manipulate when I say operation, I manipulate the membership of the uh, membership of the uh, uh, of the members in a set. Members are not manipulated, rather the membership function of the member is manipulated. This is very important, okay. that is x and mu x. In classical set, what is manipulated is x. Like if I say x is 1, so in the classical set, when I set say uh, 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 x is 1, then I would say 1 minus x is 0. So, in this the manipulation concerns with the uh, member, whereas any kind of manipulation in fuzzy sets does not involve with x, rather it is involves with mu x. Just, just a moment we will clarify that. So, the common operation there are many other operations, but in this class I will not discuss all of them, it is not necessary also, but these three are sufficient for you to understand what are the different operation on fuzzy set. One is intersection which we say the minimum function, union which is we say maximum function, then fuzzy complementation. These three are very uh, 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 important operations. Okay. So, now we will explain what is fuzzy intersection. Now, you see that uh, I have here two different uh, uh, fuzzy set or I have defined that for, uh, uh, for the members of a universal set uh, where x belongs to capital X. So, you see that here this is my one set and this this particular thing and there is another set this one. So, if I say this is my A set, okay, set fuzzy set A and this one is my fuzzy set B, right. So, so what is happening here is the, the intersection is I take that which is common to both A and B. So, this one and this this this. So, this this would be my mu A intersection B. Okay. So, I always consider the minimum of two membership. I am what I am trying to manipulate is the membership function, not the members. For example, if I select uh, a, any value of x, like here you see this x mu b will give this much membership function and uh, mu a will give a membership function according to this. Uh, so, according to this, this is the membership function. So, the what is the overall membership function is minimum of these two. So, the my boundary is this one. You can easily see that the, the membership of A union B, uh, sorry A intersection B is all the members that belongs to uh, that is common between A and B. The membership, their membership will follow this particular curve. Okay. So, there are two things we are doing that we have two sets, one is set A, set B. In classically what we see, classically we see that what is the 
what is the common members between A and B. Here we are not only seeing the common members, we are seeing also what is their membership function. And the membership function is computed uh, minimum, that is mu A intersection B is minimum of mu A x and mu B x. Okay. So, that is the that is the membership function. So, when there is a common member between A and B, the, the membership function wherever is minimum that is retained, the other one is thrown away. Okay. So, this is so the member is retained, what is changing is is the membership function. Similarly, here the fuzzy union which we say maximum function. In this case, you see that this is again I can easily say that this one is A and again this one is set B. Okay. So, this one is A and this one is B fuzzy set B. Okay. The, the members uh, in A. So, what, what, what is meaning of this? When I say this is A fuzzy set A means all the members in set A has a membership function defined by this gamma function. Whereas, similarly in B, all, all, this, all the members in B are given or assigned a membership function in this manner. That is the meaning of this, uh, this two curves that we have. And then we are trying to find out what is fuzzy union. So, I have to find out uh, in this uh, the member is are both belonging to A and B, but their membership is maximum of both. Like if I have a common member, uh, sorry, the member, uh, so so I have set A and I have set B. So in A union B is my uh, the union set. So if x belongs to A and x belongs to B, then x also belongs to A union B. But in fuzzy set, here this is mu A x and here it is mu B x and in this case, this is maximum of mu A x and mu B x. the membership function that is the way it is assigned. I again repeat because I do not know whether you follow it. I am just repeating it. What is meaning of fuzzy union operation? So, you say that this A curve this sorry this, this gamma function represents the way all members in set A are assigned fuzzy membership. Similarly, this curve represents uh, the membership function by which all the members in B are assigned membership function. Now, when I say uh, A union B set that I am talking about a set that is A union B, how do I assign the membership to a this set? This is the question. So, now I am saying if x belongs to A and x belongs to B, then x belongs to A union B. Okay. Sorry, if x belongs to A or x belongs to B, uh, to be very clear here I am writing, if x belongs to A or x belongs to B, then x belongs to A union B. Right? But you see that here when x belongs to A, in this fuzzy set, the membership function that is associated with x is mu a x, okay. right? Like for example, this one. In this case, if my x is say this value, so this belongs to a, and it has a membership function. This value is say 0.1. So here it is 0.1. 
but this member do, do not does not belong to set B and hence his membership function is 0 here. So, mu B x for this particular candidate is 0. So, this candidate when it comes to A union B what I do I take this two value find the maximum which is 0 0.1 and assign here which is 0 0.1. So, this is mu A union B is 0 0.1. Okay. So, this is meaning this this is this sentence says that all what I discussed. Okay. I hope this is very clear to you this is very important operation that we do that when we have two different fuzzy sets okay, whatever operations the classical op the, the operations are classical only the manipulation is among their uh, membership function right otherwise the notion of the notion of uh, uh, the notion of uh, the classical fuzzy op uh, operation also remains intact except that the associated fuzzy membership they get changed Okay. So, we talked about fuzzy union, fuzzy intersection, now is fuzzy complementation. What is complement? Now, you see that this one, this, this particular triangular function is my set A, fuzzy set A with this uh, and the, the, the way the membership function were defined according to this triangular function. Okay. That is, uh, if I say this is my alpha this is my beta. So, before alpha uh, all the members in my A set they have 0 of uh, membership function associated. Similarly, all the members uh, uh, beyond beta in set A they are all associated with the 0 membership function. Whereas, when I say complement of the set A then what happens? the complement is like this just inverse what is 1 minus mu a x meaning 1 minus mu a x is you see that this was 0. So, this becomes 1 this was 0 here it is 1 and th this is a this is a, a decreasing slope a linear line with the decreasing slope now this is increasing slope this is increasing slope but the complement has decreasing slope. So, you see that, so this was the, uh, the triangle, the inverted triangle and the 0 side has become inverted to 1. So, that is meaning of 1 minus mu x. So, what you are seeing is that the, the members remain intact in the set A, whereas the associated membership functions got changed. Okay. Like to let you know that if I put here uh, various values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, you can easily see that 1 and 2 and 3 they had 0 membership associated in fuzzy set A in complementation they all have membership 1 okay. and you see that when it is 4 the the fuzzy set A the 4 is associated with the 0 membership whereas, in complementation it is 1. Similarly, 5, 6, 7 uh, in A fuzzy set the associated membership is uh, uh, 0 whereas, in complementation they are all 1. Okay. So, we talked about 3 very important uh, operation on fuzzy set union which is maximum function, intersection minimum function, complementation is 1 minus the original membership function membership value. Now, the other operations that we know for classical sets like de Morgan's law the difference they also can be used for uh, fuzzy sets okay, like de Morgan's law. Let us take the first one this one. Okay. So, where is mu the, the in this case we do the same thing okay. that is we take the A complement B complement and then we see the if x belongs to 
a complement and x belongs to b comp or x belongs to b complement then x belongs to uh, a, a complement union b complement okay so this means if x belongs to a complement or x belongs to b complement then x belongs to a bar union b bar okay so so a bar b bar union x belongs but here this i would say this i would say mu a bar x the the association the associated membership function here it is mu b bar x the associated membership function so then what should be the associated membership function with this x maximum that we know so with this is maximum of of mu a bar x and mu b bar x or bar means complement that we talk about now this has been written like this you see here that is the membership function with a bar union b bar is this is maximum it is not minimum this is maximum mu a bar x is of course 1 minus mu a that we have learned this is a complementation similarly mu b bar x is 1 minus mu b so among this whatever is maximum is the uh, is the membership associated with a bar union b bar similarly when it is uh, the let us take the difference case which is this one mu a intersection b bar when i say intersection this has to be minimum and associated with a is mu a and associated with membership associated with mu b bar is 1 minus mu b so among these two which is our minimum is the membership associated with a union b bar these are the properties of fuzzy sets they are commutative a union b is b union a a intersection b is b intersection a just like classical sets fuzzy sets they equally hold associativity a union b union c is a union b union c similarly a union bracket b union c is a union b uh, sorry sorry a intersection b intersection c is a intersection b uh, combined with intersection c distributivity uh, you can easily see that a union b intersection c is a union b intersection a union c which is here similarly here a intersection b uh, union a intersection c so this is distributivity uh, idem potency which is a union a is a and a intersection a is a identity a union null matrix sorry null set is a a union universal set sorry a intersection universal set is a uh, a intersection null set is null and a union universal set is universal set x okay so here x represents universal set uh, now we will finally we'll give an example to illustrate how fuzzy operations are done we will take discrete uh, fuzzy set because that will be easier for us so that means the set has a finite member like earlier when i showed the fuzzy set operations they were for continuous uh, sets but here it is uh, finite sets uh, it is easy also for us to understand and appreciate the operations that we did or we learnt in this class so here you see that we have n members in the set a and each member is associated with a membership function mu a x1 mu a x2 uh, mu a xn so if the fuzzy set is a it has n membership and each member is associated with the membership function now like that we have a two sets one is a another is b in a we have members 5 1 2 3 4 5 
Similarly, B we have also member 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but the difference is here the associated membership is different, here the associated membership is different. So, here uh, the way it is given say 0, 1, these are the membership function, these are also the membership function. Now, let us evaluate all the operations that we did, one is first is complementation. So, given A, A var, so here 1 is associated with 0, comp, zero uh, uh, membership, that means this actually in a sense that we should uh, ideally we do not keep 1 inside A because it does not belong to A, but in complement 1 belongs to complement because with membership function 1. Similarly, 2 here has a membership function 1 and hence 2 does not belong to A complement is membership function is 0, but you say these are all fuzzy that is 3 belongs to A complement with membership 0 0.5 whereas, here also it is 0 0.5, 4 it is 0 0.7 here is 0 0.3, 5 it is 0 0.8 here and it is 0 0.2 this is complement it means whatever the membership here you just subtract that from 1 and you get the membership in A complement similarly B complement. So, you see here whatever is here the membership function they are all subtracted from 1 and we write it here. Okay. And similarly, A union B, if I do, so what I do is that uh, let me uh, write down here because I must show you one example, so that uh, you appreciate it. So, 0 by 1, 1 by 2, 0.5 by 3, 0.3 by 4, 0.2 by 5. So, this is my fuzzy set A, fuzzy set A and fuzzy set B is 0 by 1, 0.5 by 2, 0.7 by 3, 0.2 by 4 and 0.4 by 5. So, these are my two sets. So, when I find A union B, all that I do is that what is the maximum. So, you see that in both 1 and 1 they have 0 membership. So, in A union B 0, here it is 1 and 0.5. So, I take 1 which is our maximum for 3 the maximum is 0.7. So, I take 0.7 for 4 the maximum is 0.3. So, I take here 0.3 for 5 it is 0.4 I take 0.4. In case of intersection A intersection B you see that I have to take minimum now. So, minimum means 1 of course, they have same so 0 and in this case 2 the minimum is 0 0.5. So, I take 0 0.5. So, 3 I have uh, minimum is 0 0.5. So, I take 0 0.5 for 4 the member I have uh, the minimum is 0 0.2. So, I take 0 0.2 and for the member 5 the minimum is 0 0.2. So, I take 0 0.2. So, similarly, you can also evaluate uh, the difference A difference B or B difference A. So, like that uh, whatever the membership uh, sorry operations we learnt we can apply uh, to this example uh, through this example I hope that you understood how to apply uh, the various fuzzy operations on two different sets or on a set. Okay? So, this is very important because they would be useful as we learn further. Finally, the conclusion uh, earlier I told that uh, fuzzy was uh, 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 fuzzy logic was introduced to deal with imprecise data uh, that we encounter in our day to day life. But here I give you another very interesting uh, example why fuzzy is very powerful. Like here somebody has drawn a circle in hand like this okay? or I can draw any any number of circles. You know, I, I would like to draw them this is free hand circles, but as many times I may try very rarely I would find that I can actually draw a circle in free hand because circle means from the center all points uh, uh, in this curve should be equidistant then only it will be a circle. So, if I ask a question what is the probability if I draw once on a board you go to the blackboard and draw a circle and ask a question 
what is the probability this is a circle? The answer is of course, I cannot define probability here, okay, because I have drawn the circle only once, eh? because I uh, sorry I have drawn the curve only once. So, I have to repeat it millions of times probably I may not be able to still draw a circle. So, in this case I draw a circle a freehand circle in the blackboard they appear to be circle, but they are not circle rigidly mathematically they are not circle. So, hence using probability first of all if I draw once a circle I cannot define probability. Probability means I should be able to repeat that uh, experiment. Okay. So, probability can be defined for an event that can be repeated again and again, but now I am asking a question that I have drawn a freehand curve I am asking a question whether it is a circle or not what is your answer. Okay. Using probability theory I cannot give an answer, but using fuzzy logic I can always say eh, this is a circle with membership function say 0.7, this is a circle say 0.5 membership function and this is a circle say 0.6 it all depends. So, what I am trying to do is that now I am able to say them they they are circle with a possibility index 0 0.7 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 or 0 0.2 depending on looking at the curve you know you draw a freehand circle and anybody can assign some kind of you know belief or confidence level on this how how good it is a circle I can get an answer, but using probability theory I cannot get an answer for such a question. So, fuzzy membership can be defined for any event, the event need not be repeatable, okay, because I can draw a freehand circle on the blackboard and still assign a fuzzy index for it. So, finally, what we discussed in this lecture is uh, the difference between crisp and fuzzy sets they are discussed. Uh, some uh, in this uh, you, you saw that in crisp we have only members in fuzzy sets along with the members associated membership function. Some typical membership functions are enumerated like we had uh, gamma function, s function, pi function, uh, Gaussian functions. Uh, uh, various types of operation on fuzzy sets are also discussed and primarily three operations are fuzzy union, fuzzy intersection and fuzzy complementation and any other operation for the set operations that we know can also be applied on a fuzzy set. Okay. And fuzzy operations are illustrated through an example the last example we took a discrete fuzzy set we, we showed that how we can com, uh, compute fuzzy complementation, fuzzy union and fuzzy intersection. With that thank you we will meet in the next class to discuss fuzzy relation.